Holy Jesus. What is that? What the f*** is that? Welcome back, everyone. You're going to want to stay tuned for this because crazy things are to follow and it's totally worth the watch. So here's a quick recap on what I'm doing here because I'm quite sure that not everybody watching this saw the previous mention on my other channel. There's lots more details over there, so I'll include a link above so that way you can go back and watch. Some have said the yard looks like a junkyard, and I completely agree. I don't wish to move any of this stuff when it comes time to relocate to my new shop because, well, that's going to be a real pain in the ass to come about a year or so. Right now, I'm taking a break from Gregory. Bees Car McGee is about ready to roll out, and Eleanor's homecoming is a short way into the future. So why do I sound like this today? Well, it's because I've been put up to it. People know I used to be on the radio and they want to do my radio voice, but this is one of many because sometimes I sound like this too, just the same. But it's been a long time since I've been on the radio and, uh, well, I needed a little bit of practice. But uh, I'm not going to be doing that through this video, you guys, so uh, I hope you had a good time with it because, well, I thought it was funny. Again, it's been a long time since I've done that, so thanks for bearing with me through that. <laughs> So anyway, to keep me productive and keep my channel interesting, I decided to make a junk build. I mapped out some simple guidelines for this project and they are as follows. 1. This must be junk from my yard or come as free or really cheap or even borrowed stuff. 2. The only exception is if parts are necessary to make things work, like safety stuff, brake parts, hardware, welding supplies, tires, you know, things of that nature. 3. All costs will be revealed. I don't normally do this for a multitude of personal reasons, but this build will be different. So please enjoy it, it's not going to happen much. 4. I'm open to suggestions from viewers, with Patreons getting the first dibs at these suggestions. So far I've gotten a lot of these and people have said they wanted to see a VW motorcycle or a trike. So let's see what I can do. But I'm sure most people that watch my videos here on YouTube won't listen to any of this anyway and will tell me something like, hey why don't you just go ahead and go buy this or that and put it right on there instead. Ah, usually after a solution is had, then the work is already completed. Uh, <laughs> but that's just not the goal here. The goal is to use what I've got as much as possible and limit it just to that. But watch for the comments, you'll see exactly that. People aren't going to listen. <laughs> Five, let's build this thing as quickly as possible. I never finish anything around here, and even the things that people would call done, I just cut open again. I I'm never finished. But this project won't take me years like some of the other things around here. We're not looking for perfection. Maybe a few months or even just a few weeks. Let's see how quickly this thing can go from nothing to together and get it going. Going back to my roots with motorcycles, I sourced an extremely rusty salvaged ATV from D&D Cycles here in Pensacola. They are very, very nice people and I've mentioned them many times before. They have been good friends of mine for many years and owed me a favor, so this Honda Foreman was to be the heart of this project. Oh, well, there it is. I took it home and began to disassemble, cutting off parts and throwing away the crusted mess. This thing was surprisingly just as rusty as my vintage VWs. And the backstory behind it is that it belonged to an old man that parked it in a shed next to a pile of fertilizer. Yeah, the off-gassing that occurred ate through the paint and the dampness and humidity facilitated the rust. It's amazing just how rusty this thing actually is. Well, the sad part is, after all that work and getting the engine out, it had to go back. It was promised to someone else. No harm, no foul. I got promised to raid the parts salvage house if I needed, and I love it in there. They told me just to bring back the engine and the electrics and just throw the rest away, so that's exactly what I did. The rear axle was still attached to the swing arm, as that's how I intended to use it, but that's just the way it went back too, so I returned it to their shed. No arguments for me. There's other things in that shed that I'm much more interested in, and these are great people, and I thank them every time I see them for always being so kind and helpful. So I went back home and started digging around. I pulled out this floor pan that had some terrible rust in the center of the tunnel. Even the axle beam was rusted through, but the frame head and the torsion section with the frame horns are surprisingly solid with minimal rust, so this could be a good platform to start hacking on. Let's just try to save what's left of it for another project, or maybe for some others. I even found an old CR500 frame and a set of forks from an SV650. Well, hmm, this could be interesting. So I got to cutting. My mom always said, be careful with sharp objects or you might cut off your... Yeah. Well, my mom also said, you probably shouldn't lie to people. And that's more like it. Well, to remind everyone, I'm making this thing up as I'm going along, but I did wonder what this pan would look like with some 41 inches removed from it, removing all the rusty, nasty crap from the center.
And then there was fire. <laughs> what the fuck is this piece of sh? I like it. I picked some parts out of my junk piles and off of other chassis that were already here to get prepared for this. I even busted my ass a couple times. <laughs> then B and Ashlyn dropped by to help me with the assembly process from here. Welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman, uh -huh. and this is what the cat dragged in. It also is Beam Queen, and this is Ashlyn. <laughs> and today we came to work <laughs> on Duckman's junkyard project. Now, if you haven't watched a previous video over on the other YouTube <clears throat> channel of mine, VV the Duck VV, you need to, because in that intro we discuss what's going on here and why I picked up all the trash around my yard because I got too much. <laughs> I know it. You guys know it. I hear comments about it constantly. I've been on top of it and I've been collecting things, getting rid of things, and doing my business. And this is the result of that. And we're going to see where we're going to go with this today. I've collected a bunch of parts that we're going to start putting together and we'll just see where it ends up at. And uh, maybe we'll have a working proof of concept by end of video. What do you think? No think. No Only thinking? Volkswagen. Well, we're gonna go ahead and give it a shot and just see what happens. I'm just here for the fun. She's here for the lols. Yay. <laughs> Anyways, you guys, licky likey. Don't forget to comment down below, subscribe, and pluck that dingle belly. That way you get updates for every time that I upload a new video. Also check out duckshit.net for all of our different social media links. Ashley's got them, B's got them, I've got them. Got them, got them, need them, got them, got them, got them, need them, got them, need them, need them, got them, got them, need them, got them, got them, need them. You can find me any which way if you need to contact me or ask me a question. But we're gonna start building on this thing right away, so here we go. Roll that intro. <sighs> Too far away. I noticed immediately that the trailing arms that I had didn't match the spring plates already on the chassis. This was a set of singles. I needed double plates. No big deal. I raided the junk pile yet again and found those two. We removed the existing spring plates and swapped them out. All right, here's our single springer. There's our double springer. And there's Jerry Springer. Aww. Not you, I'll put him in. Oh, okay. <laughs> The reason for that is the bolt holes all line up differently. Rubber gogi. Rubber gogi. Now that needs to go on the end of that shaft. Remember the position it was in? Like here? You'll know approximately. You know, if you get it too high, it, it'll look obvious because it'll be beyond the, uh, the stop. Remember, we left the torsion bar in position on the inside. Huh? That's good. It was amazing just how much rust the spring plate covers had gotten since sitting outside in the weather. Even the replacements will need replacement. It's amazing. We mounted the axle beam on the front to keep the front end weighed down on the wood stacks in which it's sitting. I usually mount these alone and it was amazed how quickly this went on with the help of both a power tool and a couple of ladies. It was installed in seconds. Amazing. The spindles went on straight away after that. The ball joint nuts were rusted pretty badly and they were quite a pain to get them turning properly. It was quite a bit of effort, but then it happened. From here I used the leftover brakes that were pulled from B's Gia. The discs were rusted, but I can resurface them. The trick here was to mount the 13 inch 5 lug wheels over the 4 lug hubs. I was told on many different forums it was impossible to mount 13 inch wheels over disc brakes at all. Well, heh, I guess I proved everyone wrong here because this is the way I made it happen. Alright, we got some 4 lug disc brakes that I've managed to harvest from around here in the yard, and I want to put on them five lug 13 inch wheels and I was told you'd never get that to fit over a disc brake. Well, the duck man's been working here and I managed to come up with a way. So we're gonna cover that in just a second. All right, first we have our caliper. I needed a wheel adapter, obviously. And then the adapter needed a spacer to clear the caliper. And then I needed some longer lug bolts to tie this all together. The wheel didn't clear the caliper as was suggested, but this is nothing that a file couldn't take just a few millimeters off the top of the calipers to clear the wheel. These things are really thick and heavy and they can spare a little metal. So I mounted them up and everything fit. <laughs> so much for people once again telling me that it wasn't possible. 
The only downside that I met here on uh, putting these together was the wheel was spaced out about an inch wider than it should have been from factory. But when you look at the size of the wheels that I've selected for this project anyway, it's stupid wide, so no harm, no foul. The rear end also needed to be five lugs, but this was an IRS rear end with four lug drums. So should I use adapters and spend more money? <laughs> no. I had a set of five lug drums in the parts pile that could easily swap out and make it work for this. There will be a separate video of this process because I get asked about this incredibly so much in my private messages. It's quite easy to swap from four lugs to five lugs if you just have the right parts. Well, after the wheels were installed, this thing looks ridiculous. It was time to come up with a steering rack. Factory beetle parts would be the easiest way to get this together. But all of my tie rods are mangled and I just didn't feel like building yet another Volkswagen like so many other people. Uh, that would just be the easy way out. So I had a light bulb moment. And I remembered what I had left over in the trash. Oh man. Last thing, we need to put a steering rack on here. We've got a steering rack laying over there. Which is Volkswagen stuff. You see it's falling apart. It's got a steering box on there, old German stuff. Certainly worth keeping. Maybe it can be repurposed or resalvaged, but tie rods are all bent up. Somebody probably crashed this car. So, we're not going to use that today. Okay. Are you ready for this? I am. Come with me. Uh oh. Lawnmower came off the ATV or something tear apart. <laughs> it will all be explained in Monday's video, which of course comes out before this one. Of course. But this is, as you can tell, part part Honda <laughs> and part Volkswagen. It's also an ATV. It's also a VW. Is the Volkswagen? So. I'm calling it a Honda, uh, ATVW, and because everything was peeled off of things that we didn't want, you know, a bunch of extra stuff was just cut off the ends, mm -hmm. it's a foreskin. See the name on the tank? Oh, no. We'll be badging it, the Honda foreskin. <laughs> Oi. Do you approve, Mr. Boom? Not B was quick to help me and we tossed together this monstrosity. The crazy part here is it just fit with minimal modifications. I trimmed only a few little bits from the Honda frame. If I cut the chassis any longer or shorter, either the steering wouldn't have reached or the rear section of the Honda frame wouldn't have lined up with the torsion bar. I felt it was important to weld the frame to the torsion bar rather than to the sheet metal tunnel. Just, uh, it's much stronger there and just made a lot more practical sense. I welded the tie rods to test fit and see if it would work. Yeah, you saw that up on my Instagram. <laughs> Sorry if I freaked somebody out, but it seemed to get the job done. Very minor modifications were made to the pitman arm on the Honda steering rack, and then the Volkswagen tie rods were cut. The Honda tie rods were turned on a lathe to remove barely a millimeter so I could slide them inside of the Volkswagen rods. That's right, one rod went right inside the other, and that's where I welded them together. The reverse threaded tie rod ends are the Honda pieces up on the Pitman arm, which is directly beneath the steering column, and the forward threaded parts on the outside are all Volkswagen OEM parts. So it all worked! Together we rolled this thing off the trailer, and I was impressed with just how heavy it had become. Probably much heavier than the Honda Foreman was on the trailer previously. But this build wasn't meant to be practical, it was meant to be absolutely ludicrous! So I got to tacking the Honda frame down to the Volkswagen chassis. And speaking of crazy, back into the trash we went, for a laugh. There goes, brand new seat. New old stock, found at a Honda dealership. There we go. 
<laughs> Steering is a little heavy as I anticipated, but when it's rolling, it'll probably be just fine, just like a Volkswagen. Let's see what all the Honda stuff looks like just jammed on this platform. Probably going to look wrong or weird. Yeah, drop that right in. Oh my god. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Uh, I like it, but I don't. It's too plastic and too modern looking. It's also not hanging up correctly because some of the frame has been removed where right? I need to cut the front end off. Did you get some old Volkswagen parts to put on it? <laughs> I might. It's a fantastic idea. It's something I have been thinking about. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hop up there. You're going for a ride. Uh -oh. Holy Jesus. What is that? What the f is that? Well, it looks ridiculous. I feel that if it gets any kind of bodywork, it needs to be something that stands out a lot more with a more vintage look about it. Right now, it just looks like an extra wide Honda Foreman with slicks on it, and uh, well, that's not what I was going for, so this bodywork is probably not going to be used, and if it does get used, it'll just be in portions of it, because well, why? It was free. <laughs> so how do you feel about that? Conflicted. What's it like to sit on a foreskin? <laughs> uh -oh. that's the yeah, that's the foreskin. The Han Dub foreskin. <laughs> well, in the coming weeks, this will be something that we're going to work on some more. We're still in phase A process. The <laughs> front end looks pretty neat though. <laughs> it's right where the headlights end, is right at the front beam. It's like, poof. Like somebody just hatcheted it right off. It was in a paper cutter. This was a fun junkyard, very, very quick build to have put this thing together is uh, in just what, five, six hours we went through this thing and just started tearing stuff out of my junkyard, consolidating crap. I managed to build something that, uh, I think it's a pretty good proof of concept. Yeah. This, there's no reason why they shouldn't work. I don't see why not. I'm gonna have to come up with some controls and figure out how I wanna work the brakes, how I'm gonna do the shifter, and put in Pretty much know where the engine and transmission is going to go. I mean, that's pretty standard stuff on a Volkswagen, and uh, this is going to be no different than that. And I think I have most everything to finish this, yeah. except for a couple small pieces, like what kind of master cylinder I want to use. But again, it's just how I want to do it from here out. So we'll decide, and in time that will happen. But for now, licky likey, comment and subscribe. Don't forget to pluck those dingle bellies. That way you get updates every time that I upload a video. Check out duckshit.net for all of our different social media links. We've got lots of them. Facebooks and tweeters and Instagrams and... Uh, Patreon. And Patreons, that's right. Even I got one of those. Patreons knew about this project weeks in advance. I actually did tell my Patreoners about it. So you guys uh, that are watching this video, <laughs> You might want to head over there if you're interested in seeing some things early. But we're going to continue on this, get this thing done as, uh, as quickly as possible, because that's what this is about. This is a junkyard build. Build it with crap. It doesn't have to be done the right way. It just needs to be done the good enough way. <laughs> enough for government work. Yeah, close enough for them. So uh, thanks, you guys, for watching. We'll see you next time.